All right, welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to go over vibe coding. What is vibe coding? Well, it's the best way to code, in my opinion. Um, for making games, it is really fun. It changes the way coding is mentally, so different people can kind of jump into it, just like how visual coding is different. Um, vibe coding is also different. So a normal coder, what they would do is they would open or create an object and they'd add scripts to it, like you see here. And then inside these scripts, it would have all this code in here. So this code, what's happening is it's using the way that Unity is built and it's using its libraries and things with C-sharp syntax or the language of C-sharp to talk to the Unity library and the Unity game to then make the object do what it wants to do or do what you want it to do, which that's really cool, but not everybody wants to code like that. The problem with this is it's very... It looks very complicated to a lot of people, and not everybody likes to just read through lines and lines of code. And some people just want to have more of a playful approach and a fun approach to things. The benefit of vibe coding, though, is that it can also teach you about code. Like it gives you tool or gives you tips inside of the code in comment form. So these green lines or these double slash lines, these are comments, and you can usually get the AI to explain what each piece of code is doing if you want. You can also tell it to remove all the comments if you don't want comments. That's up to you, but I like to have comments to know what everything is doing. So that's what code is, and a lot of people argue and say that coding is better than vibe coding, or vibe coding is better than coding, and vibe coders aren't real coders, etc., etc. The way I see it is, do what you like to do. If you like to code, code. If you like to vibe code, vibe code. If you like to visually script like blueprints in Unreal or visual scripting in Unity, you can do that as well. Just do whatever you like to do. So vibe coding, in my opinion, is a complete new form of coding. And how do we do it? Well, the first thing, just like any coding, is you have to come up with your idea. So let's come up with an idea. Let's make a cube. So in this case, I'm going to create a cube. Down here, underneath everything in my hierarchy, I'm going to go to 3D object cube, and I'm going to move this guy over here just to show the cube there. And we'll hit play just to show you, to give you a baseline example. If I hit play and I look at this cube, I can run into it. It's solid. It doesn't move. And if I jump on it, it's kind of like a platform. I can stand on it. It's small, so my character kind of wants to slide off of it because he's got this slope script that I'm working on. But it's an object, right? It's there. But it doesn't do anything. It's not actively doing anything. So how do we get it to do something? First, we need the idea. Let's make this cube spin. Kind of like a uh, spinning coin that you would pick up and collect. Let's make this cube spin. So here I'll rename the cube. I'll right click on it. Rename spin cube. Maybe I'll call it spin cube. That works. So once we've done that and we've renamed our cube and we know what we're working on, I would go to my AI and start prompting it. But in this case, I'm going to show you where I would put the script first. So I would go to my master game assets scripts and I would open up testing scripts and you have your own folder right here to do that. So you create whatever folders you want inside here. So here scripts, testing scripts, then I would right click and go to create C sharp script. And this is the type of script we need to create. The reason I show you that is because I want you to understand what we're talking about when we talk to our AI. So I'll go to Google in this case, because I want to pull it up in Google just to show you. So if I go to google.com, you'll see you get this search bar. Mine's in a dark mode, but if yours is white, it's no different. It's the search bar at Google. And you got this AI button. If you click this, it'll take you to the AI mode. You could also use ChatGPT. Both of them work really well. Um, if you can't get here, if you're on like a different browser, you could go to the top of your browser in the uh, URL or the bar at the top and type tinyurl.com forward slash GV code, like Google vibe code. So tinyurl.com forward slash GV code. And what that'll do is it'll take you straight to this AI. It's just a link I added so that anyone I want to share it with, I can easily tell them how to get to it. And then what we need to do is when we talk to our AI, we need to think about how we're talking. So the first thing I would normally say is, can you create a C sharp or C hashtag script, C sharp script? So that's what we were looking at in Unity. So can you create a C sharp script for Unity that makes the object it's attached to spin? 
So here you can see I've said what I needed to say. I've explained what to do. I've explained what we're doing, like where we're doing it, what software and what kind of code we're doing. If you didn't say this and you said something like, can you create a spinning object? It wouldn't know what to do. It wouldn't know this is for Unity. It would not know this is C-sharp code. It would just give you something random. In our case, we want it to be for Unity and for games. So we'll say, can you create a C-sharp script for Unity? This is pretty standard for when you're prompting for anything. And then you'll say that makes an object it's attached to spin. That's what we wanted to do. We want to attach the script to an object so that it makes it spin. Then we hit this little blue arrow. It'll give us our code back after it figures it out. And here's where it's important. If I scroll down and I see the name of this script right here, this needs to be the same name of the script that we create inside of Unity. So I could right click copy this or I could just type this in when I create the script. So I'll go back to Unity and in my master game assets, I will go to the scripts folder, testing, and then, or testing scripts, and I'll right click, go to create C sharp, and I'll name this spinner. I could paste this or type it in. If you don't know how to paste, it's control V on the keyboard. And if you need to copy it when you're in AI, you can, or the AI talk thing right here, you could just drag select it and copy it. This has to be the same capitals and the same name that's here it needs to be the same here. So just make sure you do that when you're creating the script and then double click this to open up your code editor or your script editor. And you'll see this is the basic version of the script when you create it. Now, what we want to do is we want to go to our AI and after we've named it and done all that, we want to go to the bottom right here of our script. You'll see if I scroll down a little bit more, this block or the block that it gives us will have a copy right here. We can copy the whole thing or we can drag select the whole thing and copy it, but I just like to copy it right here. So you could do it there or drag select and copy right here. So copy and we go back to our code editor and we just drag everything here and control, not control C. I just control C it for some reason. So I'll go back here and copy it one more time. Go back here and I'll hit control A to select all or I'll just drag select all and hit control V to paste or I could go drag select or control A to select all and then edit paste. And I pasted in my script with spinner right here. You might have noticed that it removed these collections. If you don't need it, it's not a big deal. You'll know if you need it, if it gives you errors. Just know that when it gives you the script from AI, normally it's correct, but if you do get errors, there's ways to work with that. So once you have this, you would hit save. So right here, you'd click save or you'd click control S. So control S on the keyboard or click save right here. Then we could go back to Unity. And when you normally save a script that you've changed, it'll take a second to compile or update the script. Now we have this object and we know it doesn't do anything without our script. So we need to apply our script to it. So we could drag the script onto it and we'll see it pop up over here. Or I'll undo control Z. I could drag it onto the object in the hierarchy and it'll pop up over here. Or with the cube selected, I could drag it into the actual settings of the cube. And then here we have our spinner script and our settings. So let's play test it to see what it does. Now, if I go in here and I look at this cube, we can see it's spinning on one axis or one rotation. You'll see up here, it's spinning on the Y axis. So if I want to get my mouse out of here, all I have to do is go Alt Tab. When you're in play mode, you can go Alt Tab, pop up over it and you'll have your mouse here. And then you can adjust the settings. We can change the speed to like 500, make it really fast or 10 to make it really slow, 50, 100. Now that's the speed of it. Now, if we want it to spin in different directions, we could change the rotation direction. So we could just put one here in the X axis, and now it'll apply the spin speed to both axes. If I get rid of the Y, it'll only spin in the X axis now. And then if I put one here, it'll do the same in the Z axis. So if I put it in all or one in all of them, it'll spin in all directions, which is kind of cool. And yeah, that's pretty much how you vibe code. It's pretty fun. You get to play test and mess around with it. Now, if you want to save what you've done in the play test, so you've alt tabbed out so you can mess with this and then you want to save these settings, you could right click on your script and go copy component. And then when I turn off the play test up here, and then I can go to that script and go paste component values, and that'll copy over whatever I did during the play mode. And when I play it again, it'll now 
have stored the proper settings that I had set up in play mode before. So I was able to play test it and set it the way I want it. And yeah, that's how you begin to vibe code. Now, let's say you had some sort of error. I'll simulate this error by intentionally messing up something in here. So I'll just go right here and I'll put a semicolon intentionally in a wrong spot and I'll hit save. I'll move this back out and I'll let Unity update. You'll see once I get this error, this red bar right here, I've got an error in my code. So how do we fix this? Well, one easy way to fix this, if you don't really care to know too much about coding, is you could go into your script editor. So inside Unity, you would see this code right here. You double click it, it'll take you to your script that's got the error. You drag select this or control A to select all of it and control C or edit copy. And then you go back to your AI and you paste this in. So you paste in the code that you have. Then you go, can you fix the error that I'm getting in the code above? The error is below. Then you put a few spaces in and you go back to Unity. And right here, it's going to tell you the error. You just drag select. So if you select this right here and you drag select it and you'll say control C to copy it or right click copy. And you go back to this. So we pasted in our code and now then we prompted it to fix the error of the code above. And then we'll give it the error at the bottom. So we'll give it this error. So we said, can you fix the error that I'm getting in the code above? The error is below. Now it's going to read that and it's going to try to figure it out. And it'll kick back the corrected code. So here we have our corrected code and we'll hit copy right here. And we'll go back to our script and we'll drag select it or go control A and then control V to paste in the new code and we'll hit save. And now when we go back to Unity, it should update. And when it updates, we should see the error disappear if it fixed it and it did. So that's how you can easily track down um, errors in your code. You just copy over your script, then you tell it that there's an error, fix the error that's listed below, and then it'll try to find that error and fix it. And then you can play test it and see if there's any issues. So yeah, that's how you vibe code. It's how I like to code. It's a fun way to code, fun way to make things. Um, coding to me is cool. It's like problem solving, but vibe coding is a lot faster. The code comes out faster. So you get to play test it more often, which keeps it more interactive. And I don't know, it's just fun to me. Um, different people have different opinions on it. Just know that vibe coding hasn't entirely um, been recognized in the industry yet. And there's probably good places to use it and there's probably bad places to use it. Like if you were creating a really complex video game that had lots of moving parts, then you would probably want to make sure that you understood the code really well. But for being an indie dev or creating your own things or experimenting to create new things on your own, it is vibe coding is a fun way to do that interactively. And uh, yeah, I hope you learned something from this. All right, real quick, I want to add a few things that I missed in the video. So the first thing I want to talk about is when you create a script down at the bottom, like we did early on, if we create a script by going right click, create C sharp script, if we happen to click off of this or hit enter, it'll give it a default name that you can see up here on the top right or right here. You can right click this and say rename and I'll just name it my script. So you know that the name changed. Then once you do that, you can double click this to open your code editor. So once it opens, you'll see that it says new behavior script right here. And you want to change this to match what you named it out here or right here. So I'll just name it my script. And then we'll hit save at the top right here or control S to save. And that's pretty much all you have to do to correctly name your script. So if you ever have a script that has a naming problem, that's what you can do to fix it. And then if you click back out here, it should be ready to go. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is if we have a script that has an error on it, we can get a issue that can be a problem sometimes. So I'm going to go ahead and create this cube out here and move it over like we did before. So you can see it. And then we'll go to our scripts and add spinner onto it. And now just a play test to make sure it's working. We'll let it build for a second. Then once it builds, we'll look at the cube. It's working. We can see it's working right here. So if I turn off play test and I double click spinner to open it up, You'll see the script is fine. It's working and everything. So if I add a semicolon and I hit save and then I go back to Unity, you'll see this error pop up down here or in the console. If you click double click either one of these, it'll open, which I covered earlier on, and it'll tell you where the issue is. But sometimes when you're working on scripts, 
a script will affect another script like in Unity or one that I gave you with Game Jam Template. And it might try to open a script that's not the one you're working on. So you have to be careful to keep an eye out for that. And if it happens, make sure you close it so you can work on the script you actually want to work on. The reason why this is important is because if you edit a script that's associated to Unity or one that I gave you with Game Jam Template, it could have negative side effects if you alter that script. So make sure you're working on the script you actually want to work on. And definitely when you go to save your script, you want to make sure that you save only to the script you actually think you're working in. So just read the script real quick, make sure it's the correct one, and hit save when you're ready to save a script. But just be aware of that issue when you're tracking down errors and trying to problem solve issues. Now, before we jump into the next topic, let me go ahead and fix the script. I'll just hit save, wait for it to do its thing. It'll update out here, and then it'll be ready to go, and we're good to go. So the last thing I want to talk about is you can do this with more than just Unity. You can do it with Unreal or Godot as well. And just to show you what I mean, if I pull up Unreal or Godot over here, just to show you, Unreal Engine uses C++. So if I was prompting for Unreal Engine, I would say something like, can you create a C++ script for Unreal Engine that makes the object spin or bounce or whatever I want it to do? And the same thing for Godot. I would say something like, for Godot Engine, can you create a GD script that makes the object bounce and fly around or whatever I'm needing it to do? And I would iterate from there to make it more and more complex. But the idea would be the same. With Godot, you can also use Python or C Sharp. Just make sure you're telling it that you're working with Godot and not Unity when you're doing this because they'll have different assets and different structures for the program. So it needs to know that it's working with Godot. So yeah, you could do it with Unreal, Godot, Unity. Live coding is very powerful and it makes it a little bit more interactive and a little bit more fun. Hopefully you've got a better understanding of vibe coding now. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.